I started in the business uh, in design. So when I left uh, when I left high school, I did a, a, a certificate course at a technical college in Sydney. So it was a two-year course, and I really learned how to use T-square. That was about it, as far as I could tell. And then after two years, I was in the industry. So by the time I was like 20, or 19 or 20, I had a job in design. And I worked for a, a, a small uh, design shop in Sydney that did mostly corporate identity and branding. And like most Australians, after 18 months of doing that, I decided to put a backpack on and uh, travel in Southeast Asia, try to get as many intestinal diseases as I could. And, and uh, you know, chase women unsuccessfully around three continents. <clears throat> and I ended up in London. And in London, I uh, I worked at Pentagram, which was at the time Alan Fletcher was there, and John McConnell, and mm -hmm. and then I moved into advertising. So I went from design, classic sort of graphic design, to advertising, and I worked at an agency called DNB and B. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, I guess, was in the in the late eighties. And. Uh, and then, and then, so, was, and then I moved back to Sydney briefly, and had a small design studio. Then I went back to London, and then, and then in '94 I went to New York. So I went to New York uh, just when this thing called the internet had come along, and after working at another uh, design company, another advertising agency, I got into a uh, into digital, in the early days of digital. In the in the in the mid to late 90s, and so by by the year 2000, I had done this sort of professional tour from design to advertising to interactive, <clears throat> and and I think it quite by accident uh, uh, put me in a place where um, where where I had very broad skills. So you know, I understood the sort of systematic side of design and the narrative side of advertising. And then this sort of new and emerging world of digital media. So you know, it wasn't it wasn't uh, designed, but it, uh, it 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 ended up really well. This sort of random beginning of a career. So interestingly, I would say that uh, that the the most sort of fundamental creative uh, uh, skill right now is design, right? Because we're working in media. That is fragmented, systematic, and and uh, and lives behind interfaces. Everything now lives behind the interface. So, this part of that sort of design thinking, which is understanding the relationship between things, understanding how to sequence things, understanding a sort of pattern, how to pattern things, that lives very naturally in this sort of fragmented uh, media. Um, and there is just a simple sort of when you when you design an interface, which I think is a very fundamental design skill now, you have to deal with hierarchy, you know, with emphasis, um, with, uh, with signaling, you know, where you're going and where you've been. So all these things are, they are design skills. Now then you, you layer on top of that the sort of narrative piece that you learn from more classic advertising. Then what you end up is with is you end up being able to design a frame, and you also have you can also you also uh, understand the pieces you put in that world, you know the content, the editorial, that sort of stuff. So I would argue that actually uh, nowadays having at least a sensibility across that spectrum is really useful. Um, and and as I said, I think design uh, is is a really fundamental part. The theme of Adfest was was bad. bad, right? So I sort of awkwardly retrofitted the, a title, which was how to make a, a brand badass. Uh, and, and what I meant by that was how do you make a brand interesting to people? Um, uh, which seems like a simple enough goal, but we're at a point now in, in marketing where I think we've sort of disappeared up our own ass a little bit. The industry has, in some ways, become medically sealed, and is, is so self-referential that we sometimes we forget we're speaking to people that, that don't really like advertising. So, it was it was my my presentation was in three parts. Uh, one was um, oh god, one was how to think, right? So, the the uh, was understanding the sort of whole creative brain that's needed in the industry now, which is which is 
how to tell stories and how to design systems and how to bring those two things together. So I argue that, that a lot of legacy agencies have only use half of their brain because, because they're so infatuated with storytelling and they're sort of proxy for Hollywood that they grew up with that, they've, that they don't realize that media now, the potential of media now is the same as the potential for software and that you can build businesses and, and, and do more than just message, you can build sort of behavior. So, so the first bit is how do you get this sort of complete creative brain, right? How, um, how, you, how can you be smart? Um, and the second piece was was about uh, how to be true, right? So the sort of first step in in doing anything for a client is to is to start from a place of truth. What is what does the, what is the brand really? Not what does the brand want to be, but what is the, really the brand? And then how do you tell a story uh, that is as close to the truth as possible? So I think there's a lot of devices from advertising that we still use now. That, that don't ring true to, to young people. Like the, the overuse of metaphor, for example. It's, it's like, it's something that at a, at grew out of an advertising world that could only hope to make you feel something, that didn't have any ambition to make you understand something or, or to interact with you because the media couldn't do that. So the, so the second piece was, you know, how do you start from, from this place of truth and not be a liar as a brand? Um, and the last piece was, you know, how not to be boring, how to do stuff that's interesting, how to recognize that what's interesting um, in a story is sometimes different to what's interesting in an interface, that, that, uh, that you need to understand how people, the context of media now as much as the content, and that uh, there are plenty of times when the most important thing that someone can deliver me is not a story, but uh, uh, but a transaction, or some information, or a demonstration, um, and and the, and the t unless you understand all of these contexts of media now, then you're just gonna f you're just gonna be boorish as a brand to people. So that was the that was the sort of content, and I showed some uh, some case studies that I hope demonstrated these thoughts. They are different things, right? What, what advertising should do and what it will do are two different things. Um, uh, I also think that it's hard to have a conversation just about advertising because these things, are, uh, the advertising is more than advertising now. So marketing is not just marketing. Like uh, there are things that we've done as an agency, which, you know, we've built products and services that have nothing to do with, with advertising. They have everything to do with building a business from, from the core of a company. Uh, and then, and then, so so I think that the future of advertising is that the, is that uh, it, it'll be rare that we'll do uh, advertising that isn't connected to something else. That uh, that not only will you be telling stories in an environment uh, like social media that is completely connected, an environment where you're not the only voice or the only node in whatever that those connections are and those conversations are. But also there'll be times when advertising, you won't be able to advertise until you've figured out the behavior. So if media has, most screen-based media now has an interface in front of them, what you're doing in that media is, is engendering behavior. So unless you figure out what that behavior you want is first, then you may not know what message you're going to give, right? So it's sort of inverting a model that, that I think a lot of our industry has been following, which is figure out what the message is, is and, then, and then push it out through channels, including digital channels. What I'm suggesting is that the future is figuring out what to do in the bottom-up world first as a behavior, and then figuring out how to talk about it. So the biggest impediment to that world is, is, is culture, is a culture uh, of, uh, of creatives that, uh, that don't see the sort of systematic creatives as peers, they see them as sort of executional. So a lot, a lot of what I talked about in the presentation was how important uh, that sort of respect and symbiosis between those two worlds is, and, and unless we figure that out. So it'll, it'll, why I think that will be the future is because I don't think that young people now coming into our industry th think that that's a crazy thought because they've all spent more time uh, coding, creating film, 
they have this, they, they have this sort of natural feeling of agency over media that I don't think our generation did. So I don't think I think that'll happen. The other thing that that is a, is a caution for the industry is is to understand the limits of ad tech. So there's this whole world right now uh, that is trying to convince us that they can reach the right person at the right time with the right ad without ever asking a larger question which is is there even such a thing as that if it's the 20,000th ad I've seen that day. So there is a risk I think of ad tech becoming so efficient and so ubiquitous that it, that it turns us into like telemarketers. You know, which is that, that we, that, 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 that a culture that's already fatigued by advertising begins to sort of actively hate it. So that would, to me, would be the caution. Thank <laughs> <laughs>